Fan Showdown, Season 2, Episode 9, and we're going to call this one Counterintuitive. <laughs> All of these fans, uh, they kind of stray from the norm of what we normally see, but I think they're, uh, I think they're still going to work. Maybe. Also, where's my co-host? Co Cooper! Oh, I hear him coming. Come on up here. We got a video to do. Let's look. Good oh boy. Now, first up is a design that's familiar to all of us, but uh, this time it's taken to the max. So this is the Mono, and it was created by SATA. So maybe like, like, like SATA Drive or SATA Drive, whatever, you know. Now, SATA or SATA is uh, an engineering student at a university, and this is the fan that he designed. And the goal for the, the Mono or, ah, there we go, the new one-bladed wonder, is to create a one-bladed fan that doesn't thermally throttle. So we set in the bar, you know, pretty high there but I think you should be able to do it. Now we've seen one bladed fans on the, in the past on the show. There's, uh, there's nothing substantially new about that, but this time we got it to a different level. This time we have a giant blade on one side and then an equally giant counterweight on the other. Now, Seda did say to print this at 100% infill, which he's hoping will make it balanced. He also went on to say that according to SolidWorks, the center of gravity is where it should be on this fan. So what he's saying is there's a chance. Also, all these, uh, all these fans this time around were printed in Form Futura, uh, Brilliant Mocha, which is a nice brown. For brown, it actually looks pretty good, and it matches the Noctua, the Noctua body pretty good there, doesn't it? Almost looks like it was meant to be. Now, this next one's a first for the channel. That's, that's for, sure, for sure. It's actually a first, not only for the channel, but in this series. We've never seen a fan like this before, and uh, I'm also going to go ahead and apologize now for how I'm about to say your name. Sorry. Now, I don't know if you guys are all familiar with what is called print in place, but essentially it's when you print like an assembly uh, in one go, and then when you pick it up, it's all kind of interlinked together. Kind of like this shark here. Uh, actually, not kind of. It is like this shark here. This shark's printed all in one, and then when you pick it up, it's got all these joints. It's all flimsy and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. What if there's a fan like that? Well, that's what Lakifi, Lakafi, Lakafi. That sounds right. Maybe. Let me know how right that is has done and it's, uh, it's pretty brilliant. This is the RFB or retractable blade fan or retractable fan blades. Get it? All the fan blades are printed with a flexible joint so they can all be tucked in nice and tight to the hub. And then when the fan's rotating, they're all gonna spread out to be a normal fan. And I think it's pretty cool. It's very interesting, even when you just hold it and flip it around. Now, the print went pretty well on this thing. The, all the joints work, everything's still intact. There was a, a bit of a, a stop to keep the flans from not overextending so they couldn't kind of roll back on themselves. Problem was is that the, the stop that he printed was very thin, so it didn't really, didn't really work out. It was pretty much the same thickness as the support material, so it kind of just got pulled away. But I think we will, I, think that don't, I don't think that'll matter. I think the centrifugal forces will keep the blades where they need to be just by, just by spinning. Now on the surface, this next one's gonna look pretty much run of the mill. It's gonna be like, oh, that's just a, it's like a fan we've seen a million times, but it's not. This is the swag and it was created by Jimmy. Now Jimmy said that airfoils are the key to success in something like this and that this is his scientific wild ass guess at designing a propeller fan. Now, fans with airfoils aren't really new uh, on the channel or on the series. We've seen many of these many a times, but the swag is more than that. If you take a close look at each one of these blades, you'll see that there's a little gap. Essentially, you would look at this fan and be like, that is broken. And then Jimmy would be like, dude, no, it's not. I'd be like, Jimmy, look at it. There's a gap in your fan blades. It's right there. He's like, that's, that's how it's supposed to be. Now, I'm going to be honest. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to benefit the fan. Um, but I'll just have to trust that Jimmy's playing 40 chess and I'm just a pillock, but we'll see, I guess. We'll see. Now this last one goes against everything we've ever seen on the series, especially when it comes to the smoke test. Think back to every smoke test you've seen. Where does all the smoke want to funnel when we uh, watch it go into a fan disc? That's right. It goes to the center. Once the center was gone. This is the WID. And it was made by Kiki, and Kiki said that um, the inspiration for this fan was kind of just the voices in his head, and he has no idea what's going to happen. And neither do I, because, I mean, it looks cool. You have all these little tiny, like, shark teeth-looking blades around the perimeter, so the fan itself, when mounted in the Noctua fan body, it looks good. 
let's be honest, that looks pretty cool. Probably stick your finger in there and get a cut, but it looks nice. But the question is, because the blades are so small and they're only on the rim and that we know from past smoke tests that most of the smoke likes to flow into the middle, it gets kind of sucked right in the middle there. Will this even work? Let me know, make your predictions. Regardless though, it does look sick. Now, before we get into, you know, the, uh, the ever popular smoke test and see if this thing flows any air at all, let's talk about sound. And also, just as a little note, if you remember the last episode, my dB meter kind of said that everything was like 50 something decibels. I found the problem. Somehow that, somehow it turns out that when you turn the light on now, the light for the back screen, it immediately like feeds into the microphone and just says 52 or 51 decibels. So I don't know how that happened, some sort of short. So I'll get a, a new one of those. If you have a recommendation on which one you want to want me to get, because I know a lot of people want me to do like analyzers or you want me to do more than just decibels. You want to see like frequencies and stuff. So if you got a, if you got one that you think is going to be perfect for the show, let me know in the description. Maybe we'll pick it up. But for now, we'll just, we'll just keep that screen off. Keep the backlight off and it should work somewhat fine. Also, we should talk about the mono. Um, I know that he said it was balanced in SolidWorks, which it probably is. Uh, problem is, is that SolidWorks default material is 1020 steel. Uh, this is plastic. Now, I don't think that really matters. The distribution of mass is pretty much the same, whether it's plastic or steel. But the problem is, is that with 3D printing, there's always going to be gaps in the layer lines, which kind of, it, it's always going to throw off the balance. He did send a balancer with it, and I, it's, I mean, it's close. It almost, like, wants to stay in every aspect. But as soon as you start spinning it, you can tell that it's just a little off. Just take a look. But I'll just hold it down and then we'll be able to we'll be able to do all our sound testing and smoke testing regardless. The mono came in at 42.5 dBA. The RFB came in at 45.7 dBA. The swag came in at 45.7 dBA. and the WID came in at 52 dBA. So even though the mono was trying to shake itself to pieces, it was still the quietest out of all of them. And this one was actually quite loud with these little little shark teeth on the on the rim there. But uh, you guys aren't here for sound. You're here you're here for the old smoke machine. So let's see how uh, let's see how they go. So how did you like the side view? I'm not sure who recommended that from a previous video, but good call, that actually looks sweet. You can actually see like, just kinda whoop, right in there. Something just so satisfying about watching that 
Now, when it comes to temperatures, how did these boys finish? The WID came in with an average temperature of 84.3 at a room temperature of 21.6, giving us a delta of 62.7. The SWAG came in with an average temperature of 76 at a room temperature of 21.8, giving us a delta of 54.2. The RFB came in with an average temperature of 78.1 at a room temperature of 21.3, giving us a delta of 56.8. And the mono came in with an average temperature of 79.3 at a room temperature of 21.8, giving us a delta of 57.5. So although this thing tried to shake the test bends completely off the table, it didn't throttle. So you, you got that one right, Seda. You, you, you got your goal. The goal was set and you accomplished it, and it didn't really do too bad. All that said, though, the swag is in first place, the RFB is in second place, the mono in third, and the WID in fourth. Also, Jimmy straight up killed it with his uh, 54.2, placing him in first overall. Now that's sticking with your dipstick, Jimmy. See, I told you, 4D chest. So great work, everybody. Keep it up. If you guys want to get into the fray and uh, make your own fan, send it in. Uh, make sure to head over to my Thingiverse account to get all the dimensions you need. Links in the description. And then you need to send me at least an STL file to the fanshowdown at gmail.com. Get subscribed and join the fun. Because we're, we're here to prove that through the power of many minds on the internet and lots of dog, dog hair, we're going to make the best cooling fan ever created. Aren't we, Cooper? <laughs>